You're listening to the Misfit Therapist Podcast with Dr. A, where it's all about talking through some messy psych shit so we can all get better soon. This show is not intended to diagnose or treat mental health disorders, nor is it a substitution for mental health services. Please seek counseling, medication, or crisis intervention services if needed. Well, hello, Misfits. This is Dr. A. Welcome to episode three. We are calling this stripping for the dream. And let's get right into it because wasting time is ugly. By the way, I'm sure you've caught on and you're 100% right. These first few episodes have been designed to help you get into a better headspace because we're in a messy world right now. And I like messy Hell, I love messy, but sometimes messy clouds the mind and that affects what we do in our lives and who we do that with. And when we are talking about the dream, we cannot afford cloudy. We need clarity. So let's talk about it. The dream. Yeah, your dream. I want you to ask yourself the following. Do I wholeheartedly believe that I can achieve my dream? And furthermore, how did I come up with that answer? Is your answer coming from your soul or is it being driven by external factors? And are these external factors positive or negative? For those of you that said, yes, I believe that I can achieve my dream. Are you engaging in activities that grow this dream? Watering, feeding, fertilizing, yeah, dream making can get a little bit stinky. Or are you just holding on to an idea in your head with some confidence? That's fantastic, by the way, but an idea alone doesn't make shit happen. I'll tell you more about that later. If you said no, I don't believe I can achieve my dream, or if you got into, well, not fully, not right now, maybe someday, we need to talk. Why have you postponed your dream or why have you shut it down altogether? Is it because you have the attitude asshole in your head? That was podcast too, y'all. Are you telling yourself that you don't have the talent, the money, or the support to achieve your dream? Or are you basing your thoughts on what you see other people doing? Comparing yourself to others on social media. Wow, look at them. They have all this going on and oh my God, that could, that could never be me. Are you serious? What self-sabotage? Why can't that be you? Has anyone ever told you that comparison is the stealer of joy? Look, I know. I've done it. Here's the thing about the dream. You need to get your head on right. When you believe in yourself, your brain registers, I can do it. Then you know what happens? I can do it turns into action, meaning movement. Your body will start working toward those dreams or the dream, however you want to say it. When you say to yourself, I can, I will, and furthermore, I will kick ass. If you allow doubt to grow in that head of yours, then your body will do nothing. It will not pick up that pen to write that book. It will not get on the plane to your dream destination. You will not move. And what happens when we don't move? Well, we die. Yeah, we die on the inside. Oh my God, Dr. A, that sounds so dramatic. Well, it is because last I checked, you and I are in the business of living and of winning, or at least we're supposed to be. You want to know why some stay in a mediocre state? Yeah, I said it, the M word, mediocre. Ew, it even tastes terrible to say that. Why some don't chase or live their dream? For one, some of you have rear mirror syndrome, rear view mirror syndrome. You've heard this before. You're entertaining the past way too much. And when you entertain the past too much, you actually fall into a state of depression. So why else are your dreams not coming true? Simple. You don't want to put in the work. You make excuses. You want to be comfortable. You don't want to be uncomfortable. Hear me loud and clear. You're not willing to suffer. Think of the strongest people you've ever met and the ones who've made their dream come true. Did that come for free? 
I wonder if they got a discount. Should I Google for that discount code? Damn, sign me up. No, these people paid for their dream with a very special currency. This currency is called Hours of Our Lives. Ooh, that sounds like a soap opera title. Anyhow, I'm being serious. Currency isn't green or cute. It is bloody, messy, muscly, bony because it's you. You labor for that dream. So ask yourself, what am I willing to do? You know, I once heard a speaker say something super controversial. They were talking about success and why some are and are not successful. And he touched upon what I just said earlier, excuses. So the speaker said, I want you to look at your child or children and say, hey, you're the reason mommy's dreams didn't come true. Oh my God, did that piss people off in the audience? Mom started yelling, I prioritize being a mom and a wife, and that's my reason for living. And to that, the speaker said, okay, excuses. There are plenty of other examples of people with even less resources who made their dream come true, and they didn't use their raising children as a reason for not getting shit done. Look, whether you agree with that speaker or not, he's got a point. There are plenty of us, including yours truly, that went through some really fucked up shit and we're out here doing the damn thing. Speaking of doing the damn thing, it will cost you, by the way. It will cost you relationships. It will cost you a whole bunch of stuff. So my question to you is, are you ready to lose the weight? Are you ready to lose some people and things that don't serve you? Are you ready to lose the mindset that isn't working for you right now? Okay, it is time to strip people. Let me get into dream making, pen and paper out. You know that Dr. A loves notes. Okay, so I want you to start off by writing prosperous mindset and impoverished mindset. Okay, so is your mindset operating from a place of prosperity, right? Is your mind operating from a place of prosperity or is your mind operating from an impoverished space? Let me repeat that. Is your mind operating from a place of prosperity or an impoverished space? See, the impoverished mind says, I have limits. I don't know what the future holds for me. I don't know what I want. I'm confused. I fear change. Times are tough. What do I have to offer? Or my favorite bullshit line. It's a process. Let me tell you something. Even though things are a process, people use this phrase as an excuse. Nothing will change based on time alone. It's what you do with that time that makes the difference. On a complete side note, now that I've said it, people use this it's a process phrase when it comes to healing too. Well, it's a process, Dr. A. No shit, but it's going to be a process five years from now if we don't rip something open and start healing healing. It's a process is only part of that story and part of that journey. Now, when we're operating from a prosperous mind, let's get back into that and off my soapbox. The prosperous mind says the following, I'm limitless. I know what my future holds. It holds health and money and career and family. My faith is bigger than my fear. I know what I want. I'm clear on what I want. I welcome change. I am tougher than these times. I have so much to offer because I am enough. So how do we get from a impoverished mindset into a prosperous mindset? Well, I'll tell you, let's start off with talking about our mornings. You guys, mornings are so incredibly important. The most successful people in the world have a solid morning routine. There are even books written about the importance of mornings. My personal favorite is actually called The Miracle Morning. It's by an author named Hal Elrod. He has one hell of a testimony, an outlook on life, and a really nice formula for a successful morning. I've taken some of my practices from there, but also from other influencers, the Jay Shetty's of the world, and even Oprah, and 
a whole bunch of others. So I'm going to walk you through what I ask my clients to do to ensure a successful morning because successful mornings means that we are working toward the dream. So number one, affirmations. I need you to start your day off with a positive affirmation. Now, there are some clients that say to me, Dr. A, I'm not that positive. I don't feel positive right now. I'm still depressed. I just, the positive affirmation thing is bullshit. Yeah, okay, great. So if we can't start off with a positive affirmation, at least let allow that affirmation to be neutral. So here's an example. My personal affirmation, I've been saying it for the past seven years, is today is going to be a great day. Before I even open my eyes, I'm already awake, I'm still lying in bed, I say to myself, today is going to be a great day. Now, do I always believe that? Hell no, I don't always believe that, but what I do know, again, my soul, my heart, my brain, my body, they are listening and I need to feed it good things. So I'm going to feed it that because that dictates the way that I run the rest of my day. So going back for a second to my clients who said, yeah, no, this whole positivity thing. Okay, well, at least say to yourself, you know what, I got this. Before you even open up those peepers, just say, I got this. What is that telling you? That's telling you that no matter what gets thrown your way on that day, you have the strength to manage it. So if you can't say something positive, make sure that at minimum it is neutral. Okay, number two, gratitude. When I open my eyes, I start naming five things that I am grateful for and why. Here's the thing. My gratitude usually has a theme and it's usually something that I am struggling with in my life. So my thankfulness, my blessings, my gratitude, that practice is usually geared toward a specific subject. So figure out what that is for you and let's start doing that. Okay, number three, prayer or meditation. There are some days where I feel like I really need to connect with God, and then there are other days where I really feel like I need to connect elsewhere or maybe even just focus on my breathing. So I will either be in prayer or I will be in meditation, but pick one. So believers, non-believers, there is a space for you to have this sacred time with yourself. Pick one figure it out, or just simply stay in silence for a bit. Number four, movement, a walk, a stretch, something physical to start off your successful morning. So for me, it's usually a walk several times a week, or I possibly hop on my Peloton, or sometimes I just stretch. It really depends on how much time I have but I definitely try to carve out the time for movement. Number five, you are going to love me for this. <laughs> Absolutely no social media, no TV, no radio for the first hour of wake time. Why? Why am I asking you to do this? Because I said it earlier, the world is messy. It's going to continue to be. Allow yourself one hour to just sit in a sacred space with yourself. The minute that you're on social media, you're already scrolling, taking a look at what's going on that, by the way, you can't do much about from your bed. So it poisons you. It all of a sudden redirects your day into a toxic space for some of you. So don't do that. One hour from wake time, please, no social media, no TV. Well, Dr. A, I have to know what's going on in the world. You will an hour from now because the hour isn't gonna make a difference from your living room in Los Angeles, California. Just chill with yourself. Okay, and then number six, clothes picked out the day before. Yeah, you heard me. We do not want to waste our time on lower level thinking stuff. Why do you want to waste your energy on getting frustrated over your clothes? What fits, what doesn't fit? Oh, this doesn't feel good. Oh, I don't like the way that this looks. Uh-uh. We are not doing that to our morning. So for God's sakes, pick out your clothes the day before. All right. So We've had a successful morning. How do we plan for successful nights? Sleeping, y'all, is an event. You need to treat it as such. So one hour prior to sleep time, 
You're going to love me again for this. No social media. None. Nada. Don't be posting nothing. It is not happening. It will have to wait until tomorrow morning, one hour after you wake up. <laughs> so no social media. The TV. I'm going to be nicer to you. 30 minutes prior to sleep, you got to shut that thing off. Okay, so 30 minutes prior to sleep, no television. So Dr. A, what am I supposed to do for 30 whole minutes? Well, rearrange your bed, rearrange your pillows, spray some lavender, take a look at having some sleepy time tea. If you're someone who likes to take melatonin or some other natural supplement at this time, 30 minutes prior to sleep, check with your physician. So be it if you are someone who takes CBD or maybe you have something prescribed. 30 minutes is right around the time you're supposed to be taking it anyway. So you should be in this space. What else do I want you to do at this time? Journal. Now, don't roll your eyes at me. Journal. It is so important for your brain to process in different ways and be able to process on your own. I want you to give your hurts for the day, your worries, your stressors, or anything that has not served you to that journal, and then you leave it there. Once you close that book, you psychologically say, everything that did not serve me today is in that journal and I am going to go to bed in peace. So journal, journal, journal. Find one on Amazon that has a nice cover that makes you happy, that makes you feel gorgeous or handsome or whatever, but I need you to journal. The next thing I want you to do is, and here's the exception to having that damn phone in your hand, I want you to create a task list for the following day. So write down what your non-negotiables are for the day, what your negotiables are for the day you know so if it's something that you can possibly get done tomorrow if you have the time great but if you can bump it you already know that it's super important for you to make this task list at night so that when you do wake up tomorrow morning you're already feeling like oh my gosh I know what I'm doing I got this I am super prepared and so how do we end our nighttime routine well, through meditation, prayer, or simply through breath work. So pick one of those three or just something where you are in silence. Maybe you put on some white noise, some pink noise. Yes, y'all, there is a difference. Google that. So that is your nighttime routine. So, okay, I know what you're thinking. Where's the stripping part of this whole podcast? Well, it comes in right now. It is time for you to strip. You heard me. Take it off. Remember the things that we talked about a couple of minutes ago that you are full of excuses. Some of you are in your comfort zone and not wanting to work for it. Well, you are going to strip that off. Strip away your excuses. It's over. It's done. Strip away your comfort. That is gone too. And strip away your not wanting to work for it. What have you been telling yourself that has been precluding you from your dream? Whatever it is, strip it off, take it off, get naked. It has to go. The next thing, strip away fear. I don't want you to ignore your fear, by the way. Acknowledge it. Say it out loud, post it on your mirror, but do not let resistance paralyze you. You can say to yourself, I am afraid of this and I am going to keep going. Notice that I didn't say I am afraid of this, but I am going to keep going. No, we need to stop butting in our lives. But this, but no, I am afraid of this and I am going to keep going. I will not stop moving when things get uncomfortable. I will not stop when someone tells me no, and I will be relentless in my pursuit of my dream, even if or when rejected. Okay, so next thing that I need you to strip away, the doubts, that negative self-talk, that shit you say to yourself when you've just scrolled through Instagram, it's got to go. No more doubts. These things are not serving you. Okay, so we've done our stripping now, right? Another S word. I need you to steal. Yeah, super, super racy. I need you to steal ideas. Notice I did not say borrow. Immerse yourself with ideas that have been proven to work with regard to your dream. Search people out that are living your dream and ask them how to do this stuff. Do your research. Pick up a damn book. Take a class online. Hell, send me a message. I am happy to answer it. The next S word, scheme. Ooh, 
That sounds so dark. Okay, my misfits. Yeah, scheming. Scheming is just a plan. I need you to plan how things need to be or what needs to get done to achieve that dream. Now, if you feel like you are just incredibly unclear, you need that extra boost, that extra encouragement, some exercises on clarity, now may be the time to explore getting a life coach to specifically talk about your dream and how you're going to get there and for someone to help hold you accountable. Next S word, schedule. Schedule your success. That means set a damn timeline for your actions. I will do this by this time and this date and it is non-negotiable. So what's the next thing? You're going to get dirty because success, because the dream, it is messy. So be prepared to put in those long hours without pay. Be prepared to lose a little bit of sleep. Be prepared to be a little bit irritable at times, own it and then let it go because know that you are working towards something that is purposeful and meaningful and wonderful for you and for your family and those that you love and for the world. Hell, I love your gifts. I love them and I want to see them. And the last thing when it comes to dream making and probably the most important, support. Let me tell you something here. Find the right people, find the right tribe because not everyone, shocking, is going to be genuinely happy to see you succeed. Look, soy cubana, so for me, I am always really mindful of the whole evil eye thing. I know you guys that is so not evidence-based that I'm not into that brujeria. I don't want the wrong people around me. Oh, and brujeria is Spanish for bad juju, by the way. Okay, so we have talked about a lot today. And in wrapping this up, I am going to be giving you some homework. Yeah, I know, homework. But it'll be a fun one. And I promise you... It'll help you get into that dream making mode. I actually challenge you to create a dream board or a vision board for yourself. If you don't know what that is, go ahead and Google it. Maybe make an event, gather in a small group, wear your masks. Yes, you can drink some beer or wine or Diet Coke or whatever you're into, but go ahead and put together a dream board and then after you're finished, put it somewhere that you can see it, where you can see it, excuse me, so that it inspires you to keep moving toward the dream. You know, I love to share little pieces of me with you and I have to tell you, I've made a gazillion dream boards, vision boards, whatever you want to call them. Guess what? Every single dream, every single vision, it has come true. Well, I've made it come true. It's also been God's grace. It's also been the universe working in my favor, but it's been because of a lot of hard work and doing all of the things that I shared with you today. So we are done for today. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you go out there and start living your damn dreams. There is someone right now taking their last breath, hoping that they had more time and some living in regret because they didn't pursue their dreams. So go out there and do the damn thing, please. Connect with me by going to themisfittherapist.com and on Facebook and Instagram. Till next time. Thank you for listening to the Misfit Therapist Podcast. Show some love by sharing this message and simply by living each day like a badass.